video games, dinosaurs, and boobies. The three things in this world that everyone has unanimously agreed are the coolest things to ever exist. Unless you don't like video games, dinosaurs, and boobies, and in that case, did you know hitmen are hourly now? Also, turn around. Now what if I told you there was a game so revolutionary that it combined the magic of roid lizards and fun bags into one delicious package? Where can I buy this game you might ask? Well, build a time machine fuckhead, because that game came out all the way back in the 90s. A game so old and so innovative that it inspired the level design of fucking Halo. Ladies and gents, I present to you Jurassic Park Trespasser. A game so amazing and so insightful that reviewers couldn't get enough of it, with some reviewers referring to it as the worst game ever made and like a dog's dinner hold on is this video about a bad game shit the intro music is playing don't click off the video or you won't see any boobies they're real i can prove it you just have to wait During development of Trespasser, the game was originally envisioned as a horror shooter, but spent so much time in development that it was forced to release unfinished. And so critics were given a glitchy, buggy mess. But what if I told you that the critics were all wrong? Trespasser wasn't a failure because it was a bad game, it was a flop because it was arguably an amazing game. A game doing so much at the same time that no computer on the planet could even run the damn thing. And I promise, if you behave, I'll explain to you how the devs managed to make tits an integral part of this game but if you want your dessert you've got to eat your veggies you play as Anne, a woman whose plane has crashed on site b and is forced to traverse the island and find a way off of it and if you were expecting a deeper story from a game that released the same time i was still developing my penis then you've got the brain the size of it too wait hold on that joke doesn't work i already said my penis was massive in the cyberpunk video huh? i gotta change this now in most first person shooters you control what your gun is pointing at when you shoot targets trespasser is a little different as you don't control the gun you can control the entire fucking arm from the positioning of the elbow the rotation of the wrist and even to where the gun is pointing not to mention that you actively have to consider how easy it is to hold a gun because if you walk into a door a little too hard and you had a gun i've got news for you mate no you fucking didn't that, that gun, gun belongs, belongs to the void now, now. You don't get to just point and shoot an enemy. You have to file the correct legal document to your lawyer and have him get a judge to sign off on you even aiming a gun at a target and shooting the damn thing. Oh, that's a whole different kettle of fish, buddy. The control scheme for this game is a fucking nightmare. Q is to jump. Left click is to move your arm. Right click is to grab things. E is to holster your gun. Control is to rotate your wrist. Shift is to angle your hand. Hand, and the space bar is to shoot and you best pray you don't miss your shots because your guns do not reload shooting a dinosaur and your mag is empty cool you're on the breakfast menu now here is a clip of me just trying trying to aim a sniper rifle come on I'm gonna get his ass no 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 why are you turning around come on you bastard no 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 that's it okay don't worry i'll get oh shit i have an ammo Come on, come on, come on, come on, give me, give me, give me, Around give me, give me, give me. Surely it'll be one shot. Come on, get him. Get him. Did I get him? No! <laughs> come on, get away. No, let me get the gun. Let me get the gun. This fucking asshole. Come on, come on. I just need Nine shot. Shots. Yes! Yes! Let's, let's fucking go! <laughs> oh my god. Now, you can switch to a different weapon, as you can be holding one item and have a second item holstered. Problem is that story items take up a holster slot as well, so if you run out of ammo, I hate to break it to you, mate, but I don't think that keycard's gonna cut it. Now, it may seem like I'm bagging on this game a little bit, but trust me, this tedious shit right here is the most fun you will ever have in a first-person shooter, because it is such a chore to hit a raptor with even a single bullet that the second that you manage to hit a shot you're gonna scream from excitement uh oh is a big boy dude fuck off fuck off that was a visual cue to make us shoot the car there's no fucking way Seven. there's no way 
<laughs> Fuck off. That's funny. And if I'm being honest, the difficulty in killing things is where most of the horror for this game comes from. Here I am with no gun and no means of defending myself. Wow, I love walking. This is my favorite. On it. Ah! That scared the shit out of me! Holy shit! Screaming like a little girl. Now, is this game officially a horror? Well, no, not even in the slightest, but I refer to it as a horror due to how terrifying moments in this game can actually be. You give me a gun in any game and I'm not gonna miss my shots. I'll kill what's in front of me and the game will be over before it even began. But match up the stressful gun handling, the lingering fear of getting eaten, and the timing of sound effects, and this game's a fucking nightmare in all the ways that matter. It's fine. I'm gonna make it. <laughs> Come on! I missed the jump! A small announcement before we continue. If you're a patron on my Patreon before the 11th of June, you can message me a game of your choice and I'll make a short video on it as a Patreon exclusive. Games are elected by you guys and one game is chosen using the Wheel of Fortune. You'll also get early access to my videos and plenty of behind the scenes peeks at the show I've been spending the last four years working on. But enough about you giving me money and helping me give my life meaning. It's time to talk about gameplay. There are three types of segment to this game. Your combat, your puzzles, and platforming. Now, puzzles in any other game might require deductive reasoning, or at least the brain of a five-year-old. However, Trespasser isn't your ordinary game, as even the simplest of puzzles can be circumvented in the dumbest ways possible. Here I am at this gate. I need to put in a code to this keypad so that the door will open. Now, it would seem that the code has been scratched into the side of this sign. However, none of that matters as I mistakenly walked at the gate in a weird way and uh, yeah. Level design. Okay, let me give you a better example. Here I am in this lovely town. And here is all the labeling for all the locked gates. Every single gate needs a key card. The only key card I have is blue as I entered the town from gate B. I want to exit the town at gate B. D. I find a note saying that the key to gate D is being stored in John Hammond's house, which is locked behind gate C. The only person that has access to gate C is Henry Wu, whose property is locked behind gate A. So logically, if I find the green key card, I'll have access to Henry Wu's, which will give me access to John Hammond's, which will give me access to gate D, and I beat the level. So you go looking for the green key card in the town, and it's it's fucking nowhere. Not that I couldn't find it, but because it doesn't fucking exist. If you walk up to Henry Wu's gate and you push on it, it'll just fucking open. Nowhere in the rest of the game are there gates that have keycard locks that are just open. Not before this level and not after it. The game just loves fucking with you. You have an entire town full of places to explore and it turns out you have no reason to explore any of it. WHAT DOES THIS GAME WANT FROM ME?! And that leaves us with the platforming. Platforming ends in two ways. You either make the jump or you have to start the level all over again. Now, I don't mean that you die every time, although that happens a lot. The problem with the platforming is that it relies on physics. Video game physics from the 90s. In this jumping puzzle, I need to get onto the roof of this white building so that I can make my way onto this shelter so that I can jump onto the cargo containers to get a key card that I need. But because this entire cabin, which I need to get on top of, is physics based and I have the audacity to walk next to it, it's now not in line for me to make the jump in order to make another jump in order to get to the white fucking building. Great, I'm fucked. I have to restart the entire level but because this fucking thing decided to have a fit. It's stupid, right? Or is it? Because I wasn't ready to give up. I refused to give up. I was not going to let this physics engine fucking get the better of me. I dragged a crate up with me and placed it on top of the cabin, hoping I'd be able to jump up onto it in order to get up onto the white building. Problem is, the crate wouldn't stay still. I tried and I failed. It was over. I needed to start the level all over again. Or did I? And then it hit me. What if I just used the cabin as a bridge? 
and not a platform. So I jump down, I shoot the cabin, making it connect the crates and the cargo containers. I jump up onto the crates, I walk along the cabin, and... I fucking made it! But just to put things into perspective, I managed to make the next jump too. But when I looked back at the metal making the jump possible, it had fallen down. If I fucked up this jump right here, all of this would have been for nothing. That shit is just fucking exciting. I used this game's engine against itself and came out on the other side. H how could I be mad at that? There is a chance that nobody has experienced the game in this way before. And that's just kind of cool. The platforming itself can be extremely hit or miss, and I couldn't figure out why, but I managed to find a good explanation in an episode of Angry Video Game Nerd. Through a collaboration with Boundary Breaker, it's explained that you don't actually have legs. Instead, the bobbing of your body up and down as you walk occurs due to a cube programmed with collisions set to the ground. And that same collision on the cube is what is colliding with the crates when you're doing the platforming. The platforming sometimes doesn't work, and sometimes breaks due to the positioning of this cube and that's pretty fucking neat you know what else is neat titties boobs even dare i say breasts and as promised i shall bestow upon you the knowledge promised how does trespasser manage to make breasts a key feature of the game you've probably noticed by now that there is no heads up display in trespasser and that all the information that you need is delivered to you in different ways you manage your own inventory by holstering there's no need for a crosshair because you control the direction of the gun there is no ammo count as Anne will call out how much ammo is left after each shot and your boobies are your health bar. Your boobies are your health bar! Fuck yeah. As you take damage, your heart tattoo will slowly fill with blood. Once it's full, it's game over. And it's actually not a texture that swaps in and out, but a cube with multiple variants of the heart that rotates to illustrate the damage that you've taken. You can even see the edging of the cube if you look close enough. As promised, I've given you gaming, dinosaurs, and boobies in a nice, neat package. But one thing I haven't explained is why do I, the pretentious cunt that I am, think that the critics were wrong about this game? Fact is, the only reason Trespasser was poorly received is because of the poor performance of the game. This game is running sprawling biomes with a built-in physics engine, and the devs were just expecting it to run on computers from 1998. This game was ahead of its time. But today... The game runs perfectly. In 1998, Trespasser was the worst game ever made. Not because the developers made a bad game, but because the world wasn't ready for it. Also, it blue screened nearly every PC it was ran on. So uh, yeah, that's also not great. A big thank you to all of these lovely people, but an even bigger thank you to Papa Sun and Nicole for being a part of my $10 tier up on Patreon. There should be some lovely videos up on screen that I'd highly recommend that you watch. But outside of that, my name is Indrectus, you can call me Zenny, and I'll probably see you in another video. In like six months, maybe.